They say all news is good news, but only in these times could an international scandal actually help a presidential candidate. Despite Senator Elizabeth Warren moving up in the polls, former Vice President Joe Biden is still getting more coverage on cable news than any other candidate in the primary, due in part to discussions of his role in the Ukraine Gate scandal. Furthermore, during last week's debate, both contenders and moderators bent over backwards to defend Biden from Ukraine-related attacks. All of this raises the question, is Ukraine Gate actually helping Biden in his bid to become commander in chief here to explain more about this is Rolling Stone contributing editor and reporter and friend of the show Matt Taibbi he's also one of the co-hosts of the useful idiots podcast and he joins us via Skype great to see you Matt good to see you Kristen Hello, Sager. <laughs> so a lot of uh, my friends on the left are sort of lukewarm on the impeachment idea especially over Ukraine gate which doesn't seem remotely like the worst thing that this president has done however they tell me the silver lining is it's hurting Joe Biden. You have a contrary take to that. Please lay it out for us. Yeah, because I, I was actually on the road with Biden um, when a lot of the story broke. And the, the first thing I thought is this, this could really go either way for Biden, because on the one hand, um, it, it's going to dredge up uh, his relationship with his son, who has a whole host of stories in the past. Uh, that are not flattering to Joe Biden. And then there's also the specific situation of his son having a $50,000 a month job on the board of this very corrupt Ukrainian gas company, you know, essentially a no-show job well, that he got while his father was the vice president with a, a brief for, for dealing with Ukraine. Does really doesn't look good. But on the other hand, impeachment really commits the Democratic Party to a full-throated defense of Joe Biden. And in fact, um, you know, one of the first things that came out is that people were thinking of putting together a, a super PAC to defend Biden in the press. This comes along right at the moment when uh, Biden was having trouble raising money uh, on his first campaign. And then there's also the issue of coverage. He's now getting somewhere between three and four times as much coverage uh, on network TV as all the as any of the other candidates. So mm. I think what you're seeing is he's going to get a little bit of a bounce from Hmm. And so, uh, uh, that's largely what we've seen. The, the CNN poll in particular had him at 34 percent. We saw another Emerson poll that put him continues to remain atop the race. Why is it that this is kind of the perfect thing for Joe Biden and for the media, Matt? You know, like from a particular media perspective, why are they all just jumping over themselves to defend Joe Biden here? I don't understand it personally. Um, I don't. I don't understand why the impeachment arg argument requires that we say that Joe Biden and his son didn't do anything wrong because manifestly it, it's it looks bad even in the most innocent explanation of it. His right. son gets a job. Uh, you know, his his son who has a past getting consulting work for MBNA, which is you know a major credit card employer in in, in Delaware, uh, while his father is working on the bankruptcy bill in the Senate. Um, you got a board, uh, a seat on the board of Amtrak, another big Delaware employer, and his recommendation for that was from Senator Tom Carper. He said Hunter Biden rides the trains a lot. Uh, <laughs> so this is like a he's like a poster child for everything people didn't like about the kind of previous incarnation of the Democratic Party, the kind of soft corruption argument, and right. so I don't know why we're obligated to defend this. You can say that Trump did something wrong and say that uh, that this is terrible and we shouldn't be doing this, uh, especially that, you know, this sort of elite kind of politician behavior, but they're doing it. And I, I don't I don't really understand why it's necessary, uh, yeah. but they are. Well, and that's the thing that I've been pointing out is, you know, it's not just Biden that's tarnished with this, right? Because everybody, when Elizabeth Warren, who just launches a big ad buy in Iowa on corruption, and then she gets asked essentially if this is going to be okay in her administration, what Hunter Biden did, and she doesn't know, and she doesn't have an answer, and suddenly she doesn't have a plan for that. It's not just Joe Biden who ends up getting tarred and looking hypocritical. And look, it's one thing... Donald Trump is brazen, right? No one voted for Trump thinking he was going to be, like, clean about these things. And he doesn't run around with a holier-than-thou attitude. But the Democrats do, right? They are running as sort of moralists, right? Biden specifically is running on returning to these values of the past. And so you can't have that thing coexisting with, yeah, but it's fine, this standard soft corruption that everybody's disgusted with, that's totally fine and nothing to see here, and how dare you even question it. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a terrible look, and I saw that scene with Elizabeth Warren, and you know, 
the, the, the question was interesting because she didn't immediately associate it with Biden. You know, someone said, would your vice president be allowed to, you know, have a, basically have a seat on a board or something like that? And her answer was like, no, yes, maybe what? You know, like <laughs> she, she realized instantly that it was a political trap. And, and why not just twist the knife in Biden at that point? He's your rival in the race. Why not double down and say, you know, I'm not going to do this. It's unacceptable behavior. Um, and, and yet she, she didn't. She was, she was afraid of the question. And in the in newspapers who've been covering this, they've been, they've been tiptoeing around it to a remarkable degree. Like the, the, uh, initially... They were inserting, basically, it was like a Surgeon General's warning in, in the coverage. They were saying, um, you know, Hunter Biden, who, who got a seat on the board, but, you know, there's no evidence of any wrongdoing. And then they right. would say, no evidence of criminal wrongdoing, yeah. which is true, but it's still terrible. You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know why you have to, you have to, like, you know, in, insulate the readers from that kind of knowledge. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I saw the same thing, Matt. Even in the New York Times, it was like, there's no evidence that he made millions of dollars. It's like, no, 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 no. Like, there actually is evidence. Of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like... It's just that. Another thing we wanted to talk with you about, I know you were in, as incensed as I think we were, about Hillary Clinton's smear of Tulsi Gabbard. That was something that really dominated news. And it was amazing because... I mean, we, I played a clip here on this show of an MSNBC panel of somebody saying, well, she didn't deny being a Russian asset. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like, what? Karen I mean, Finney said yeah. the same thing on CNN. Right. It's insanity. Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to get your... How is it that the, this is allowed to persist, like these baseless smears at the highest levels of American media? You know, when this thing happened, my first reaction was to think, wow, they might actually believe it. You know, like... Uh, at first, when I when I saw, you know, for the last couple of years, there's been obviously an enormous quantity of this kind of behavior, you know, going on between politicians and, and the press. Uh, but I always thought it was sort of cynical politics, right? Let's let's distract from the things that we did wrong that caused voters to depart from our our party in 2016 by saying Russia did it. You know, I mean, there, there's there's a political sense to that, but. When Hillary Clinton said that last week, basically saying that Trump, Jill Stein, and Tulsi Gabbard, they're all Russian assets, the only explanation I have for that is that they actually think that that's true. And, um, you know, I, I, I think that's crazy. And, and I think you can actually see there's been a little bit of a change in tide, though. There, there were presidential candidates who pushed back on it. There were some people in the media who pushed back for the first time in the last three years. So I, I, think, I think people kind of see through it now. Yeah, it went a, a, a shade too far when you were talking right. about an, an American veteran who still, still serves this country to this day. Even, you know, peop, not every, some people still went along with it and wrote op-eds <laughs> about how this was manifestly true when obviously it was insane. Um, I just want to know how long Putin's been paying you, Matt, to say yeah. these things. That's really my question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, when did they get to you? You've been, being gro you've been groomed for 20 years, it looks like. Um, really quick, though, we had big testimony yesterday from uh, U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, yeah. Bill Taylor, um, that a lot has been made of him laying out sort of directly, no, the aid to Ukraine was, in fact, tied to investigation of Biden, tied to, you know, whatever this DNC server conspiracy theory thing is. Um, what did you make of that testimony? Did you think it was significant? Um, yes and no. I mean, it, Again, this all it's going to depend on how the members in the Senate decide to to view it, um, because a lot of this information is really in the eye of the beholder. It's going to be officials reporting on conversations about conversations about conversations, and then it's going to be their interpretation of whether that's a quid pro quo or not. And um, you know, I, until you, I think until unfortunately you get a a smoking gun conversation where somebody either in the Trump administration or somebody like Rudy Giuliani is is caught in direct testimony saying something like, yeah, we told them that we'd have to hold up this X, Y, or Z um, in order to get, you know, this aid. Um, yeah, I, I, I still don't think it's going to matter all that much in the end because their, their, their end game is they have to get a whole bunch of people in the Senate to change their minds. And I don't think Taylor's testimony is that big of a game changer. Yeah, it certainly seems like the media is trying to make this whole thing right. more dramatic than it actually is. I mean, we know the outcome. The Senate is yeah. not going to convict him, but they've got to keep the story going. 
every, every day is the biggest thing that's ever happened right. since, you know, yesterday, right? So <laughs> it's, it's just like Mullergate, you know, it's just like the exact same news cycle. They've learned, haven't learned anything. And it's, it's remarkable. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Matt. Great to see you. Right. So much. Take care. Yeah. See ya. Next on Rising, where do the 2020 candidates stand after the latest national polling? And the media's latest darling establishment contender, Senator Amy Klobuchar. Team Rising is going to weigh in next.